how many different civilizations, and thus different builders, have actually been and gone, only to be ignored by an academia wishing for their remnants to simply erode away. These remnants, many of which still existing ancient ruins, are visited by billions of people every year. Each attributed to a convenient imposter, a lie which conveniently ties in with previously printed, condoned, and currently preserved paradigms by superior influences, not only ill-informing the world's young population, but attempting to rob us all of our own personal histories. However, thankfully, some things do not lie, cannot be hidden, and will never go away. We share many ancient, out-of-place artifacts on our channel, some more perplexing than others, Yet, our next artifacts might be the most puzzling yet. Found in Kosovo, upon the Shar Planina mountain range, an ancient advanced artifact that has been explained as having once been some kind of transformer. Found by photographer and researcher Ismet Smiley, he subsequently donated a sample for scientific examination. It was found that the artifact is no less than 20,000 years old. In addition to the stone, coil, and copper wires, the artifact amazingly contains some form of ancient insulator, whose composition differs from the surrounding material, although not tested, it appears to have mysterious convex bands fused into a stone. Parallel to these are four symmetrically located openings, which have been postulated to have been entry points for wires, these once collecting energy from the transformer. What is this mystifying object? What was it once used for? Who made it? And with dating results of over 20,000 years, just how much older could it possibly be? Could these objects have once been a common occurrence amongst this ancient civilization? Similar to the clearly advanced metal clamps previously covered and found upon numerous ancient block-built buildings throughout antiquity. Due to the sheer number of clamps used, although they are clearly a remnant left by a lost civilization, far older than academia would ever attribute the buildings to, many of the clamps have survived the eons to be tested, examined, and displayed in numerous different museums as more modern artifacts. Is this how this transformer survived? Was it due to the sheer number of them once in existence? Or is it possibly a very special rarity? Unfortunately, regardless of alternative advice, Ismet intends to donate it to academically funded scientists for, quote, further studies. We feel there is a high probability that the artifact may be lost or stolen. Regardless, it was thankfully photographed and is undoubtedly a very remarkable object. We often encounter a variety of techniques used by individuals and academic bodies who are attempting to stem the flow of true historical knowledge. Indeed, many of the most controversial and compelling artifacts are often stolen, conveniently lost, or simply sold on by their original discoverer, never to be seen again. However, sometimes, these artifacts successfully make it into the public domain photographed and studied by reliable figures before these vanishing acts can occur. And our next artifact is no exception. Predictably, the tactic that is seemingly chosen for these particular smoking guns is for the academic and scientific worlds to simply ignore such objects as if they do not exist. Or, as with this particular upart, to dismiss it to look away and claim it is simply impossible. Known as the Nampa doll, it is a small figurine, confirmed beyond doubt as having once been crafted by the hands of man. It was discovered in 1889 by a group of workers who were searching for water near the town of Nampa in southwestern Idaho. They were attempting to create a well, drilling a borehole down to a depth of 295 feet at which point they began to bring up strange cuts of clay. Amongst them was a unique projectile, a tiny clay figure in the shape of a woman. 
Professor Albert A. Wright of Oberlin College officiated the figure's authenticity in 1979, making academia's attempts to vanish the out-of-place figure near impossible. Quote, it was not the product of a small child or amateur, but was made by a true artist. Though badly battered by time, the doll's appearance is still distinct. It has a bulbous head with barely discernible mouth and eyes, broad shoulders, short thick arms, and long legs. There are also faint geometric markings on the figure, which represent either clothing patterns or jewelry. They are found mostly on the chest or around the neck, arms, and wrists. The doll is the image of a person of a high civilization, artistically attired. We find his conclusion of it, being of a person of high civilization, as the most compelling, further supporting our belief that the doll is a leftover remnant of a now lost civilization. And due to academia's dismissive attitude towards the stonework, it is lost as a result of their conspiratorial ignorance. Furthermore, and an additionally intriguing reality, is the dating of the artifact. The geological strata it was discovered amongst is known as the Glens Ferry Formation, that, according to the same entities that deny the artifact's existence, was created approximately 2 million years ago, during the Pliocene-Pleistocene transition. Additionally, before the mass cover-up of artifacts, research, and indeed evidence from the public domain, George Frederick Wright, a geologist from the Boston Society of Natural History, also confirmed this astonishing object's authenticity. Quote, There is no ground to question the fact that this image came up in the sand pump from the depth reported. In visiting the locality in 1890, I took special pains while on the ground to compare the discoloration of the oxide upon the image with that upon the clay balls still found among the debris, and ascertained it to be as nearly identical as it is possible to be. These confirmation evidences, in connection with the very satisfactory character of the evidence, furnished by the parties who made the discovery, Confirmed by Mr. G. M. Gumming of Boston, who is the superintendent of that division, and who knew all the parties, placed the genuineness of the discovery, in my mind, beyond reasonable doubt." End quote. How could a figurine, dated at 2 million years old, identified as having come from a technologically advanced civilization, exist? Authenticated by a number of official and highly trained individuals, if indeed there has never been another technologically advanced civilization to have flourished here upon our planet. We find the fact that academia is simply attempting to dismiss its existence, proof of their concealment of this truth, making the Nampa figurine undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many enigmatic, unexplained ancient mysteries which we have covered here on our channel many mysterious ruins which are slowly revealing their secrets to us. However, what must be the most intriguing of the historical subcategories has to be the O-parts, out-of-place artifacts that have been found all over Earth. These mystifying items are the only subject within the field which can shed their own very unique lights upon the distant past and sometimes hard-to-believe possibilities attached to their ages. The island of Samos within Greece is home to a number of these particular artifacts. 1.5 kilometers off the coast of Turkey, this small island has a big history. Within the island's capital museum is a wide range of very impressive artifacts. The most interesting among the collection is undoubtedly the strange bronze artifact which according to academia, merely depicts a strange form of unknown carriage that would have once been pulled by horses. However, some also believe that the strange animals are actually depicting a form of periscope and that the entire artifact is actually that of an ancient submarine. Additionally, there also exists another amazing artifact that we felt was worth a mention, found within private collection. Originally a religious idol, what do you think this wooden artifact is depicting? Could it actually be that of modern-day paragliders? somehow sent back in time, 
seen and depicted by this once ancient people as a religious vision? It's an incredible, if rather imaginative thought, but it is testament to such artifacts intriguing nature. There are many incredible, out-of-place artifacts that can be found all over Earth. Each one just waiting to spark our interests. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The chronological dating of our technological development and capabilities within antiquity are often correlated and judged upon the developments within heat management of metal refinery. For example, one of our strongest arguments against the modern-day attested view that ancient Egyptians were the builders of the Sphinx, the pyramids, the tombs, etc., is partly based upon their lack of ability in heating a furnace to a sufficient enough temperature to create the hardened metal tools needed to penetrate and carve such hard stones. The Nanjing Belt is an extremely rare find that has unsurprisingly vanished from public view, preventing any further analysis, although the existence of these artifacts was officially noted in several places and was indeed analyzed by several specialists. What is amazing regarding the Nanjing Belt is its age, but most importantly, what it is made of. In 1952, two tombs were found within Yixing City in China. One of the tombs also had a clear date inscribed upon its inside. It stated that they were buried on the 20th of September of the 7th year of Yuan Kang, the late general of Zhao, 1700 years ago. When the belt was initially retrieved, it was sent for analysis at the chemistry department of Nanjing University. The results were astonishing. 10% copper, 5% manganese, and the remaining was 85% pure aluminum. However, the development of aluminum is a very modern achievement, requiring extreme heats to smelt, heats that we believe were impossible to manage at the time. Alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite at 1000 degrees C, with a melting point of pure alumina being 2054 degrees Celsius. So, the question persists, how could such an artifact exist? A question once taken up in the West by three scholars, Butler, Glidewell, and Pritchard at St. Andrews University. The abstract sums up their work, quote, Pieces of aluminum, supposedly parts of a set of belt ornaments, were found in a Jing Dynasty tomb during excavations in the 1950s. The authenticity of these finds was questioned at the time in view of the technology required to isolate aluminum from its ore. Examination of the thermodynamic requirement for this process demonstrates unequivocally that the temperature required for this process is greatly in excess of that possible with Jing Dynasty technology, and so the finds cannot be authentic. Unfortunately, again, we find ourselves in familiar waters. So-called scholars, three in fact, with a conclusion based solely upon historical assumptions. Unfortunately, the artifact was seemingly too controversial for some, and it has disappeared, sadly, quite possibly forever. During a previous video titled Secret Missions into the Great Pyramid, in which we covered the most bizarre of artifacts once found in a seemingly inaccessible shaft, eventually discovered to be an entry shaft into the now-named Queen's Chamber. Just how this bronze ball hook and several bizarre fragments of wood found their way into the pyramids is unknown. We shared the fact that the wood had become conveniently lost, thus preventing any future dating of the artifacts or indeed this possible attempt to have once penetrated the pyramid far before the Spanish invasion of Egypt, their modern rediscovery, or indeed before the entrance to the pyramid was located. However, in a rather strange yet fortunate twist of fate, Sitting within a collection of ancient Asian relics within Scotland, an Egyptian archaeologist was shocked to rediscover these cedar fragments, once mislabeled and thus never classified, lost for almost 70 years, yet refound within an old cigar box. One has to wonder, with our prior hypothesis, and indeed the convenience of the wood somehow becoming lost, was this a deliberate act by someone? Possibly someone who realized the controversy attached to this artifact. 
What we find most compelling, however, and a possible motive to hide such an artifact, are the now-realized result of modern carbon dating, showing that the wood dates to somewhere between 3341 and 3094 BC, long before the claimed construction of the pyramid. Furthermore, although many have claimed that counterweights and timber structures were utilized in the construction of the pyramids, this wood not only predates the claimed date of their creation, but does so by some 1 to 2,000 years. So any mainstream explanation for this dating anomaly is severely lacking. However, it fits perfectly with our original hypothesis and is indicative not only of a far earlier date of construction, but could indeed have been a possible successful attempt at penetrating the pyramid's deepest inner chambers, simply due to the mysterious yet impressive location in which these enigmatic artifacts were found and subsequently retrieved from. Curatorial assistant Abir Aladani found the fragments of wood as she perused the Asia section of the archives of the University of Aberdeen. Quote, Once I looked into the numbers of our Egypt records, I instantly knew what it was and that it had effectively been hidden in plain sight in the wrong collection. I'm an archaeologist and have worked on digs in Egypt but I never imagined it would be here, in northeast Scotland, that I'd find something so important to the heritage of my own country." End quote. As you can imagine, we find the wooden artifacts highly compelling. We have come to a point in the age of our civilization, thanks to the efforts of countless individuals who, in the pursuit of truth, specifically the reality of a lost past, a lost civilization, once possessing now lost technologies, has finally arrived on the main stage of debate. It has come to a point of critical mass. Either having been made aware of their existence, or indeed realizing or stumbling upon this hidden truth independently, regardless, we have uncovered an immense array of proof to not only confirm their existence, but a proof now all but overwhelming to argue with. The entire planet literally littered with impossible remnants, left by what we believe was not only one, but part of an array of lost civilizations, several of which being past global superpowers. Yet I digress. The artifacts found throughout Giza, for example, demonstrate a seemingly impossible ability to move and carve stones with the tools mainstream academics would put in the builder's hands, making such creations impossible. There exists, within the museum's archives themselves, a smorgasbord of vases and stone cores, lay for all to see, each suggest that they were not only the result of some form of advanced lathe work, but other far superior and powerful tools far ahead of that of the copper chisel, which to claim was the culprit, we feel is now nothing more than an offense to one's intelligence, when the evidence to suggest otherwise is in front of one's face at the same time. We have previously covered the vases supposedly made using nothing but copper in the past, specifically the trilobe disc. Yet the many other members of the collection, known as the Saqqara vases, not only demonstrate a mastery of lathe work, but some are so impossibly delicate that when attempted to be explained with modern paradigm, one is left utterly baffled. What lost technologies or techniques were used in the creation of these vases? Article 99 from the Anorthosite Nice catalog, but one example of this extraordinary ability to either cut or possibly mold these stone vases. With wafer-thin edges and a shape formed with the lip, demonstrating they would be impossible to recreate even with the advanced technology of a lathe. Who made these seemingly impossible artifacts, along with the unmissable Great Pyramids, highly compelling?